This is the second video about cause and effect language, so I hope you've watched the other video first. If not, come back into YouTube Steve, go to Grammar and Vocab and find that cause and effect language one. This is the second one. So let's give some more examples now of other language we can use. So very, a very simple way to use cause and effect language is just to use a verb that infers a causal relationship. So we can use a simple verb like stop. So punishment stops crimes. But we could be a bit more academic and use a word like deter, which is a nice academic word. So punishment deters crimes. That's active. We've got crimes as the effect or reducing crime, and we've got punishment as the cause. Remember, we can switch it around as well, and we could say this, crimes are deterred by punishment. So again, then I'm, I'm bringing the effect to the front. The crime is the effect. I'm bringing it to the front of the sentence. So it, it's basically just a passive sentence. But and, and we do that because we want to make the effect more important. So crime's important. I'm going to start with that. Yes, we can stop something is a great word to use. Um, if we're talking about causes, and of course the opposite of stopping is starting or doing something. A good academic verb to use there is encourage. So money encourages people to do things. So I could say this a wee bit more academically in a different topic. I could say financial rewards encourage learners. So there we go. We're just using a verb in the middle to infer a causal relationship. That's a nice, easy way to write about it. Um, the second one there, again, we could switch it around and go, learners are motivated by financial rewards. Now, another way we can use causal language is by using conditionals. This is a bit more advanced, but also a good way, and it's good to, to know two or three or four different ways to, to use language. Using the same topic, if we talk about learners and financial rewards, we could say something like this. If learners are rewarded financially, they will be motivated. We could also say if learners are rewarded, they are motivated. So there's different ways we can use that second clause. Now, this is a high level grammatical sentence now, so that will help improve your grammar mark and arts and also would help with your structure mark as well if you put the sentence in the right place. And that's a good point. In the right place. So where are we going to put these cause effect sentences in our essay? Do you have an idea? I hope you've thought about here or here. We can put it the explanation of our main point in the body of our paragraph and we can also, especially this conditional sentence, put it at the end of this uh, essay. It's a really good finishing sentence. So if the essay asks you to discuss a problem and you've given some suggestions in your essay, you could say something like, if the suggestions considered in this essay are implemented, the problem will reduce or the problem will uh, go away. So it's an excellent sentence to use right at the end of your essay. Remember cause and effect language, it's very important. It's important in arts and it's important in any kind of writing.